Hi, I'm Jasper Laster, and I'm doing my project on neurosurgery rehab. Uh, so there's a quick overview of neurosurgery. There's a lot of different types of neurosurgeries, uh, but the main ones I'm going to be going over are the ones that actually like, remove the brain matter, like neuro-oncology surgery, which is when they uh, remove a brain tumor. They also sometimes just do adjustments on the brain, which still require rehab because it may affect unintended areas, because obviously if you're adjusting the brain, you can't hope that just that one area gets adjusted. Other areas might be adjusted in uninfected ways or unintended. What makes neurosurgery rehab so special, what makes it really special um, is that you have to use part of the brain that really just wasn't necessarily designed uh, for that particular use. Like take the story of Jody, for example. Uh, she lost half, uh, they had to remove half of her brain to help keep her from having a stroke. And she, the other half was able to compensate and she was able to live a fairly normal life be, because that's just the amazing thing in the brain. But it is definitely difficult because you're using something that's maybe designed for speech to also solve puzzles, which in case you don't know, is sort of kind of difficult, but you know, it still can be done. Uh, you also have taken account that some of what the patient may need to work on are just basic life skills. Like, of course, go back to the speech thing. Maybe they've lost their ability to understand speech. This is very particular, but like they can't communicate to you and they don't understand what you're trying to say to them, making the rehab process very difficult. Uh, and of course that you have to have a lot of patience for that kind of rehab. Of course, there's a lot of different, uh, types of neurosurgery rehab and a lot of different rehab specialists. You have physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech language pathologists. You also have neurologists, uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, people in sports medicine, neuroradiologists. Uh, you also have, uh, them working on the type of rehab, like brainstem rehab, general conditioning, range of motion, muscle strength, at home therapy, emotional therapy, balancing coordination. You also have things like bowel and bladder function, uh, functional ability before the brain injury. Got to take that into account. Social situation. I have to take that into account. Learning ability, obviously motivation, coping skills, readiness to participate in the program itself is also very important. Uh, so one type, I'm going to be listing seven here, but one type of neurosurgery rehab is, uh, speech and language therapy. And it focuses on improving language comprehension, language expression, tongue control, and social situation. Language expression and tongue control kind of go together, but of course, not always. Like sometimes the problem with language expression is that they can't control their tongue, in which case you pretty much have them like you have them like juggle like a piece of candy in their mouth or you have them push to regain strength and control over the tongue. But sometimes language expression is just like maybe they understand what you're saying, but they can't properly say it just because their brain isn't doing that. So you need to slowly work them through just saying words. Their tongue might be totally fine. Language comprehension is very difficult because they don't even understand what you're saying, so they can't really – give you feedback or they don't really know what you're saying. So you have to work through it like you would a kid, right? Just slowly build up a foundation and then improve on that. And of course you got to take social situation into account. Like, are they a lawyer? Then they may need to know more advanced language comprehension and expression than say a construction worker would before they're allowed to go back to like home rehab. You have neuromuscular rehab. This is of course muscle control and muscle weakness. Of course, muscle weakness, this can just be to the point where you just need to strengthen the muscles so the nerves can do what the nerve wants to do. Or in other cases you like, for example, they'll do things like uh, where they'll have like a paralyzed limb, right? And the therapist will move the affected limb, uh, encouraging the person to move it as well, right? So their nerve can just get used to doing that motion, right? Sort of like assisted range of motion, but it's more for just for the nerve to get used to doing it. Uh, and of course, you also just want to be able to just improve like involuntary muscle movements. And this is very important. It's like activities, basic ones that you wouldn't even expect, like getting out of bed in the morning. Turning, turning around, changing your position when you're sitting down or maybe even sitting up, getting out of your bed and onto the floor, uh, maybe getting out of a wheelchair safely. It's just like all these things that you wouldn't really think about but may need to be rebuilt entirely. Emotional therapy. This is incredibly important because obviously they're going to be going through a variety of emotions throughout this whole rehab process. Motivation, because a lot of them will just like give up, especially if their frontal cortex is uninjured. This is their like learning. So like they know what they want to say or they know what they should be doing, but they can't. And they may lose motivation and just be like, oh, it's not worth it. You also need to help them with coping skills. Like let's say, this will turn into a later one on occipital, but like color recognition. Like sometimes something happens and you just become colorblind and that's just a permanent thing. You need to teach them the coping skills for their own like mental state just to make sure that also you want to make sure they're ready to do it and other various emotional problems like depression and stuff like that that comes along. Coordination. This focuses on just very basic things like eating, washing, grooming, writing, just all the very basic stuff. 
Uh, for this, they like to do something called constraint induced uh, movement therapy, which is when they'll like put the put the unparalyzed arm in like a sling or like a mitt or something, and then have you do daily activities like washing, grooming, opening doors, stuff like that with your with your hand that needs more like uh, neurotransmitting going through it. Occipital, this goes back to my whole color recognition. Like sometimes uh, maybe they don't recognize the color that's being seen because their brain might know it. But of course, color blindness, this is really important for color blindness, right? Because sometimes you can just become colorblind if they like uh, something happens during a neurosurgery. And you really have to teach them like, okay, your vision of color has been drastically decreased, but here's here's what this sort of stuff means. And here's what you can work with, right? Word blindness, this happens particularly like right after, say like a very big, tightly put together word like occipital or... Uh, or like unaffected or like, or uh, coordination, right? Any of these words that are like really tightly packed together and just a lot of words in them, their their brain, their eyes might not even process it because it's just so tightly packed together. You have to slowly work on making sure the eye gets used to processing tiny things very packed together. Reading and writing, this of course ties into that. You want to make sure that they their hand is keeping up with what they're writing. Recognizing drawn object, objects. Obviously, this is particularly difficult when you translate from like 3D to 2D very quickly. Sometimes their eyes just like can't quite keep up. So you have to slowly work them into that. Cognitive therapy, I'd say this is probably the most difficult one to help rehab. This is like all your stuff like learning, organization of thought, problem solving, memory and speech. Like this is all like the most vital stuff to just exist, right? Like their memory, they may lose, they might lose a ton of their memory. Learning, like their ability to learn and understand things, they might lose that. They might also lose things such as like concentration, comprehension, uh, other stuff, uh, other stuff like that. Uh, perception as well. Uh, and of course, a lot of the problems depend on the injury. Uh, it's a very slow process and has to be tailored to each person in particular. Uh, and always requires one-on-one -on -one treatment. And they just pretty much have to go through like maybe simple tasks, just one and like just the process of tying a shoe is to be broken down into each individual part and that each individual part has to be practiced over and over and over again. Now, brain stem rehab. Uh, of course, some stuff with the brain stem, you obviously can't rehab like the pulse, but like, of course, things like eating, right? Let's say like maybe you're, you're really hungry, but your brain's telling you that you're not. So you have to pretty much work through like, okay, yeah, eat, even though you don't think you're hungry, you, your body needs food and also sleeping. Sleep schedules can be massively out of whack. Like, let's say you've maybe slept enough that your body's replenished, but your brain's still like, no, I need to sleep more. You need to help them program them out of that. Or maybe they only sleep for like an hour and they and they and they and they feel fine, right? Their brain's telling them, oh yeah, you're good, you got enough sleep, but they did not get enough sleep. So you have to really help them break out of that. Uh, in conclusion, there's just a lot of different uh, things you can do with uh, rehab options in neurosurgery because the brain is just so diverse. A lot of them even use different types of therapies like, uh, like of course, like just like overall muscle therapy or like coordination rehab. But uh, lots are more central to the brain. And of course, throughout it, the, there's a constant use of MRI scans. Uh, and of course, this is to make sure uh, that the patient, considering a lot of times, especially early on, the changes maybe won't even be noticeable, right? Considering it's just maybe like a new connection being made in the brain. Uh, in the occipital lobe of the brain or like in the frontal lobe of the brain. and But you won't notice that because obviously it won't be a big noticeable change, but it's a connection that's being made because of your rehab. And with the MRI, you'll notice it and you'll be able to help improve on that. Uh, but of course, over time, it'll cause more, much more drastic improvements the more connections are made. And, and even sometimes, and this is just an unfortunate fact of a neurosurgery, sometimes they just will never be able to make a full recovery. Sometimes that's just how it is, and you just have to help them deal with the life that they have now, and you help them improve their quality of life as much as possible. And that's sort of the issue is that you'll never really get them back to like like a lot of a lot of focus on getting them back to the state they were before they entered the rehab. Neurosurgery rehab is a lot different because sometimes they're just like that permanently, and you just have to help them cope with that. Uh, and of course, a lot of the times I mentioned before, it's not quite as like drastic or as like noticeable as like other improvements like oh they they can now lift double their weights or they can throw a ball while jumping now right instead it's much more gradual in nature so you have to be really kind and understanding uh towards them if you really want them to improve because it requires a ton of patience because like what they may lose might even be just a basic skill for just like existing like say like talking or understanding or even being able to like learn things at a decent rate like what they might lose might be a core function of existing for you and me. So you have to be very slow and gentle with them 
in the gradual buildup. And of course, uh, just always be kind with anyone you're rehabbing, but in particular, th- 